Hello Lagos, up you Lagos. Greetings, wonderful up you community. Welcome to another episode of your favorite radio show, Up You with Ezine. How are you all doing? Yes, I like to ask you that to feel your pulse. How are you all doing? So today we're looking at the IWD 2023 motto from a different perspective. Embracing equity in a variety of contexts is our focus on up you with Ezine all of this March. Today we'll be looking at embracing equity from the context of gender-based violence, GBV. It's our on radio and I'm here to keep you company wherever you may be. So let's do this, my beautiful people. Finding self, finding purpose. My name is Ezine Kufrekane and I'm your host. <laughs> Please follow us on all our social media platforms at Up You With Ezine on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'd love to connect with you and keep the conversation going long after this program has ended. So who is ready for this episode? The topic is embracing equity in the context of GVB. According to the UN, gender-based violence is any act of violence that results in or is likely to result in physical sexual or mental harm or suffering to women including threats of such acts coercion or arbitrary deprivation of liberty whether occurring in public or in private life today on the show i have my co-host toby in the house toby say hello to lagos good morning lagos how are you all doing today Great, Toby. It's good to have you on the show. So remember, dear listeners, that all episodes of Up You With Ezine are now on our YouTube channel. Please go catch up. Take the nuggets you need to run for your life and your dream. Subscribe and leave us a comment. It will help us to serve you better. Remember, it's all about you. As usual, we're streaming on Instagram at Up You With Ezine and at RadioGarden.com. One in three women worldwide, and sometimes four, depending on the statistics you're reading, experience physical or sexual violence, most often perpetrated by an intimate partner. Gender-based violence permeates every aspect of life, affecting people in every country and across every industry, income level, race, ethnicity, religion, educational level. It is not only a human rights violation, but also a public health challenge, a barrier to equitable civic social, political, and economic participation, and a limiting factor for education, household productivity, and income. GBV is a pervasive barrier to equity and must be prevented and responded to with attention to intersectionality and a survivor-centered approach. Keep it locked on OP with AZNA. Let's learn together. <laughs> And it's time to bring up our guest for today. Our guest on the show today is Josephine F. Chukuma, a gender and development specialist and the founder executive director of Project Alert on Violence Against Women, an NGO that promotes and protects the rights of women and girls. She had her early education at Our Lady of Apostle Secondary School, Yaba, Lagos. Thereafter, she proceeded to the University of Calabar to study English and Literary Studies. After the compulsory one-year National Youth Service, SCARPS program, she had a brief stint as a journalist with the now defunct Democrat newspaper in Kaduna before proceeding to the Institute of Social Studies in The Hague the Netherlands for a master's degree in development studies, specializing in women and development. She's a fellow of Indiana University, United States of America. She's a member of several national and international academic and professional associations, such as the Institute of Directors, IOD Nigeria, Association of Research and Nonprofit Voluntary Action, Association of Research on Civil Society in Africa, and sits on many boards and executive committees, such as Clean Foundation, Network on Police Reforms in Nigeria, and Our Lady of Apostles Secondary School All Students Association, where up until recently she was the national president. Justwin has won many awards internationally and nationally for her relentless efforts to promote and protect the rights of women and young girls in Nigeria. These awards include, but are not limited to, the Ashoka Award, Doctor of Human Letters Honorary Doctorate, Ray Gems Award, Friend of the Needy Award, Cross River State Amazon 
Yeah, like I said, to mention a few. Her NGO, Project Alert, is a brand known for domestic and sexual violence advocacy. and response set up the very first shelter for abused women and young girls in Nigeria, known as Sophia's Place. Dear listeners, please join me to welcome our very celebrated guest this morning on the program. Good morning, Josephine. Hi, Hazen. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. The way you're smiling is just so <laughs> cute. <laughs> I can't be with this in there and I'm not smiling. Oh, thank God for that. You know? Ah, it's good to know that I make people <laughs> smile. Toby, you say do. hello to our guest. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. It's such a pleasure having you here with us. You have such a beautiful, beautiful smile. Thank you, Toby. Do you thank see you. that? And I didn't it's, ask Toby to say that. It's the Zinne effect. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, all right. So, um, it's good to have you here. Thank I know you. what it cost you to be here. So, I am very appreciative of you being here today. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Okay, so let's run on this one very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and set the stage. Um, embracing equity in the context of GBF is what we're talking about this morning yeah and embrace equity is a team for this year's iwd and here at opu with azine we're looking at the team from different contests you know and uh, so please just tell us what does this mean to you share your understanding and your perspective please thank you very much isn't there first mm-hmm. and foremost i'll like to speak on the issue what is equity mm-hmm. you know sometimes people mix it up with equality yeah so so when you're talking about equity it's the quality of being fair and impartial mm-hmm. it refers to fairness and justice you know and then embracing equity does means realizing that the playing field is not level for everyone mm. the playing field is not level and that there are people who face systemic and cultural challenges that from day one already makes it you know while the other is running from ground uh, and maybe zero they are already minus zero or whatever mm, Do you understand? Mm. so equity is all about fairness it's about justice so this theme for us in the um, anti-violence movement or uh, in the justice sector talking about sexual and gender-based violence this theme is very very important because you're talking about equity when dealing with issues of sexual and gender-based violence be it in the workplace be it at home how equitable how fair are employers Hmm. you know how Hmm. fair are employers how fair in the family in extended families the way they treat women and young girls how fair are they you know when you're talking about harmful traditional practices, when you're talking about uh, uh, the, the manipulation and misinterpretation of religious books, be it by the two dominant religions, Christianity and Islam, you know, because I tell people that for me, those two books don't preach violence against women. Mm. It is the way we, the adherents, the way we manipulate and misinterpret these religious books, you know, to discriminate against women, to treat women and girls unfairly, you know. So that is what equity is in the face. I mean, when talking about relating it to um, sexual and gender-based violence. Thank you very much. You know, um, when you started, I was like, it reminded me of something I normally would say that some of us are digging foundation while some of us are already starting from first or second floor. Yeah. So equity brings takes that into consideration yeah. in dealing yes. with each yes. and every one yes. of us. Yes. And that point you made about the dominant religions not yes. um yes. not not being um um harmful to women. Not not, not, not preaching is the is the manipulation and misinterpretation of them. It's the human you, mind it is and the human w- mind. If mm. you carry the Bible or the Quran and give to ten of us here you'll be amazed at the 10 interpretations you are going to get true that <laughs> from true the that. from the ridiculous to the <laughs> true up that. to the absurd true that yeah. so that's why it's very important yeah. okay great for the avoidance of doubt yeah can you please define gbv in such a way that the lay person listening to us today yeah. understands exactly what we're talking about you already started but let me just add to that mm-hmm. simply put it is the perpetration of arm or the threat or actual perpetration of violence, I mean harmful uh, uh, practice against someone or a group of people because of their agenda. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So like we did a study some some years ago and we spoke to some market women. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll never forget what one market woman said when we said, when we asked that question, what do you understand to be violence against women? The woman said, now those bad, bad things where men and even society, even we women say they agree, make them do to us because we be women. True. I mean, you couldn't have those said bad, that. Those bad, bad things. Yes. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And for me, that is the definition. You know, so those are practices. They are, they are, they are harmful practices. There are actions. There are policies. You know, whatever you call them, that discriminate, that causes pain and suffering to women and girls. Whoa. I mean, I, I, I couldn't have said it better. I know I had read the UN thingy, but I mean, just hearing it now from a lay person in the marketplace yes. who says all the things that are being done to us women bad bad things you know yes she bad bad she things qualified it. <laughs> that have been done to us you know by ourselves yes by each other by other people yeah. by the government by yes. policies and all yeah. of that everything just falls nicely into what we're discussing today yeah. so let me quickly open the phone line so that you can be part of this conversation so the number to call is 0913-6410 and the number to text is 0913-6430 I want to commend you and the organization you lead. So indeed, the conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. <laughs> you know. So um, you. honestly, it is um, a very, very encouraging thing to read that you actually r- build and run the first safe home uh, for women. Yeah. How has your journey been to here? Hmm. Isn't it? It's been um, challenging, interesting, rewarding. All of it. Um, I was a young 29-year-old girl. When you set out? When I set out. Oh, my God. I was a young 29-year-old girl when I set out. I'm now in my 50s. And at that time, I wasn't even married. I married when I was 30. And when I was starting then, I could remember people saying, what does she know of marriage? What does she, what is she talking about domestic violence and all of that? You don't have to be... I tell people, when you wait for something to happen to you, then it's too late. Mm. True. You learn from other people. Growing up as a young girl in Nigeria, I come from a family of girls, loving family. But going to school, university, and seeing what my roommates, girlfriends, even in just boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, you come back and the the guy has has, has bulldozed your eyes. Mm. And I'm like, "Ah, for what? After all, both of us are in school now. Abby? Yeah? And then a young guy is telling you to come and cook for, for him in his hostel. And I'm saying, for what? The school fees our parents paid. <laughs> my, my school fees is not cheaper than your own. If anything, maybe mine is even more expensive than yours. You came to read, I came to read. Why should I spend my time? You know some of those things. Cooking look, for you while you're reading. Well, while you are reading. <laughs> you know, we take these things, these things, we normalize these things. But this is, those, are the silent, those are the silent fingers hmm. of of discrimination. My father used to say one thing. He said, you can only be treated in a way you permit someone to treat you. True that. True that. There must be that tacit permission. Mm -hmm. People will try. They will always try. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But left to you now, it's left to you to either accept it or say no. You know? So, seeing all of that and then growing up and then I said to myself, is it a crime to be a woman? Is it a crime to be a girl? You know? And then when... I started, when I thought of projects, when I thought of the shelter, and then I got married at that time, I'm sure a lot of people were pitying my husband then that, hmm, this one man that is going to marry this troublesome girl. I can imagine. <laughs> this troublesome girl who has not even married yet, and she's started already <laughs> shooting cannons left and right, wanting to be, maybe it's this one year she went and studied abroad, or two years that just turned her into what she is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, wasn't, I am where I am. I grew up in this society. I grew up in Lagos, in Shola Road, Sue Liri. You know, and all of that. So I was born, bred, and buttered in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, no. And then when you start talking to women, women abused women, and then you hear them say things like, but where do I go to? Where do I go to? And I'm like, come on. You know, you hear adult women speaking like babies. Yeah. Speaking, because it's a socialization. You know, from the rule of your father to the rule of your brother to the rule of your husband. When does it stop? Where does it stop? You know? So a lot of women have imbibed that. Oh, I can't say anything. Let me hear from my brother. And the brother may, may even be a junior one. Who, you know? 
yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or a, a mother will say oh i'm waiting for my son to come back mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. do you understand mm-hmm. so where do i go to where do I? and i'm like come on you have a family you came from somewhere you didn't drop from the sky if I go back, my father, will, my mother will say, my parents will send me back. My mother will even tell me, ha, look, I managed your father, so go and manage your husband. Mm-hmm. She may not realize that the levels are different. Yeah. Do you understand? The levels are different. That she did that doesn't mean I should do that. In fact, she did that so that we shouldn't do that. Beautiful. Yeah. You know? So, and that's, you know, so that gave us, that was, I said, that question, where do I go to, was what Project Alert one year into our existence we started in 1999 by 2020 21 one year but one year six months after we needed to address that question where Where do do i go go to to? and that was what gave rise to the shelter sophia's place and the name sophia meaning wisdom yeah we are telling women girls please be wise please be wise they're a human being you know, on the day a child is given birth to, if you don't look at the genitalia, you wouldn't even know who is a boy or who is a girl. True. It is you and I in the process of bringing up that child or those children where we, you know, we put into their heads. That's socialization. Exactly. Do you understand? Oh, you are this, you are that. And we, girls, young girls grow up losing it, not having confidence in themselves, not believing in themselves, not have, thinking that what will make them somebody what will make it's them external to themselves it's external to themselves then they seek completion in marriage mm. instead of seeking complementarity mm. they seek completion you know so that was how what gave us that was what made us stay oh, let's and at that time we started people said oh Josephine wants to scatter homes this young girl that just got married wants to scatter homes thank God for a supportive husband thank you for an enlightened husband. Do you understand? Yeah. And I said, no, I'm not scattering home. In fact, I'm saving families. Yeah. Because between the sanctity of life and the sanctity of marriage, life comes first. A dead woman is not a wife. A mm. dead man is not a husband. Mm-hmm. You are a corpse. Mm-hmm. So you need to be alive for you to enjoy that institution. That is a wonderful... I'm not against... I love, marriage is wonderful. Mm-hmm. But it is a nightmare if you are in, in the wrong with the wrong, wrong person lives have gone permanent disability have been attained mm-hmm. is that what the marriage we are talking about no so that's what Sophia's place you know got set up to do to give temporary accommodation to women running from abusive environment it's not a permanent home yeah. temporary for you and to be able to sort yourself just and some, then figure out exactly, what you want to do have some space away from that environment and then working with professionals to talk you through help you to dissect the, your issues and for you to decide nobody decides for you mm. the decision is yours so that you take full responsibility of for the your, outcome for the outcome honestly i must commend you even listening to you now i'm like how does she cope how does she do all of this because i can imagine that question is a searing one yeah. What do I do? Where do I go? Where do to? I go to? Is a really searing question yeah. for a full-grown woman but not to know just where to, to go, go to, to for safety. For safety. Thank you for Sophia's place. I'm glad there is such a place. Thank yeah. JVB is a pervasive issue within our society. You know, like I said in the intro, we have one to three, or one in three, or one in four, depending on the data that you're reading. Yeah. You know, so these women admit that they have actually been victims of severe physical violence. I've been in a situation in a gathering where it was said, it was asked um, if you have been, you know, sexually or gravely violated by a man. Raise your hand. Nearly all hands went up. You know, but you you find that we have a call. Okay, good morning. Up you with Azine. Who is calling and where are you calling from? Good morning. Good morning. Who is calling? Yeah, my calling? name is uh, Ebo. My name is Ebo. I'm calling from Oroshoki. Okay, how are you today, sir? I'm fine. Are you? Very well, thank you. Can we take your uh, question? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, just a little word. Um, um, like your speaker said, that the way. Well, we get the born boy, the born girl, mm-hmm. that nobody knows the difference between them. Mm-hmm. I want to correct her. Mm-hmm. In anything we do, 
We will say because Western education has opened our eyes when we will be on the many God's creation, how God put it. Mm. Anybody that is taking God's work to the back is not doing himself or herself good. Mm -hmm. God created man and woman mm -hmm. and gave them different wisdom. The wisdom of a man is different from the wisdom of a woman, which we all are seeing practically. Mm -hmm. Because of uh, uh, education, gender, 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 all the time, mm. we are offending God. Mm. Look at the way man think is different from the way woman think. Mm -hmm. Ability, wisdom, everything is different. Mm. If you want to recreate what God has created, please. Is when we are talking, we should consider the way God designed everything to be. Thank hey, you. Thank you very much. Please stay on the line for her response. Yes, I'm going to respond. You see, this buttress is what I said earlier about the manipulation mm -hmm. and misinterpretation of religious books. Even if we have to transliterate the Bible exactly as it is, do you understand? The creation story. God put man to sleep and created woman from his side. Not from his feet, not from his head, from his side. His ribs, meaning a partner. Isn't it? A partner. That's partnership. That is what it is. It is not about the wisdom of man being more than the wisdom. No one has exclusive monopoly of wisdom. There can be, the woman can be wiser than the man the man can be wiser than the woman it all depends on the situation this is the thing about manipulating religious books misinterpreting i said it earlier i said if you give it to 10 people if two or three other people call in here now you're also going to hear what they are going to say yeah but the point is i i think our, our um caller um kind of misunderstood you because what mm. you said was if they put a newly born baby uh -huh, boy yes, here yes and put a newly born baby yes, girl here yes if they covered them off from chest down, down and we're looking exactly, at their faces exactly. we can't tell which one is a baby boy, boy and which one is a baby, baby girl exactly that's what i that said that was what yes. you said and, and meaning that the day that those children, those two children of different genders were given birth to. They were clean slates. Exactly. Clean. So we're the ones that now put on the value yes. based on our societal yes. orientation. Yes. So we are the ones who now say, you are a girl, there's no need wasting money to send you to school. Mm -hmm. It's not, it wasn't at birth. We are the ones who say, oh, you are the boy, uh, you need to build a house for your mother. Mm -hmm. It's not so written there that you yeah. need to build. A girl, if a girl has money, she should be able to build mm -hmm. a house. Yeah. Why should they wait for the boy to build? Okay, thank you, Kola, for that contribution. We'll just go on now with the program. So, as I was saying, uh, one in three or one in four admit that they have actually been sexually or gravely bodily abused, you know, by uh, a male partner, you know, and, you know, severe physical violence from a male partner. Mm. Uh, these statistics show that there is clearly a problem that we need to pay attention to. But the tendency is that women suffer in silence. They don't, uh, because of culture and stigma, you know, go on to report. They don't tell anybody uh about it and you see they deal with this trauma and they don't even deal with it in the normal way in the proper way so it plays out in different forms in their adult life yeah. so we might find a woman now that is um you know misbehaving quote and unquote and we don't know that is as a result of trauma from way back because she has not told anybody anything about it how can embracing equity help in ensuring cases are reported documented and justice mm. gotten for victims you see embracing equity for me basically means the first step the foundation for that is admitting accepting you see before you solve a problem you must first accept that there is a problem. True. If you don't accept that there is a problem, you can't go about solving it. If something is hurting you, if you don't accept something is hurting you, how would you go to the doctor and say, doctor, something like this is, I'm hurting from my leg or from my hand or something. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. The first thing is that recognition. Accepting that this, there is gender inequity. You know, there's, there's unfairness in the way things uh, a certain group of people or women and young girls are being treated. So, starting from that premise, understanding that, from
from the way and that's why you see sometimes a woman in the hospital she will be the one that will start crying for herself after she gives birth to the third girl yeah she actually starts crying for herself and you, I'm like, you should be happy. You've given birth you safely, give birth and you're alive. And you're alive. Your baby, you're hearing and the baby cry. is alive. You're hearing the cry of the baby. You're seeing the mother. Oh, there's going to be trouble in my house. And then the man comes. Oh yeah, Mister Soso, you have a baby girl. Walks out. The stories. There are lots of stories of women abandoned in hospitals. Mm-hmm. Eh? With mm-hmm. babies. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and so so many of such things. So. When you have that from so equity starts from there. It starts from there that every human being is born equal and should be treated fairly, justly. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Starting from the home, you have two female children, you have two male children, give them equal opportunities. If you give once you give them equal opportunities, you are being equitable. Mm. Yes, once you give them equal, this if, if, the, if the boys are going to private school, the girls are also going to private schools. But where you send the boys to the to a private school, you send I'm just giving as an example, yeah, you send the girls to public schools. Do you understand? You're already creating a dichotomy already. You are being unfair and you are setting what you don't know that what a lot of parents don't know in that regard is that. You're already laying the foundation for problem in your home already, unknown to you. Because you will feel, oh, when the brother, when the brothers become something, they will take care of the sisters. Why do you think the brothers have to be the ones to take care, care of, the of the sisters? Talking about equity and gender-based violence, it's talking about fairness. Starting from the home, start I mean going to the workplace, going to schools. Going to schools, the same thing. You know, no, it's so interesting that I don't know if you've experienced this, isn't there? When my children were in primary school and secondary school, and on several occasions, I was privileged to be the PTA chairperson, mm-hmm. and I was very active. I mean, without even being PTA chairperson, I always go for my children's events and all of that, no matter how busy I am and all of that. I don't know if I'm the only one who observed that at during PTA events. Only women come. No, well, well, mostly women mostly come. Mostly women come. Yeah. That's, that is one. Number two, children who win prizes, before they've called the first boy, they've called 20 girls. True. True. Before they call the first boy, I'm not exaggerating, please people can call in, schools can call in, proprietors of schools, proprietresses can call in. This is my observation from my children's primary to secondary school, prize giving day. Before they called the first boy, they would have called 15 to 20 girls. So the question is, where do our girls lose it? Do you understand? Mm. This whole thing of socialization, you know, as the children, as our children are growing up, we are drumming it into the girls' ears that whatever you are doing, whatever you are doing is going to end in a marriage in man's house. And I'm like, marriage is desirable. It's beautiful. I've been in it 23 years. Do you understand? But we should not, we should be very factual and truthful about it so that we don't end up causing more harm than good. Do we have programs or do you have programs that encompass the male and the boys? Mm. You know, I'm thinking, instead of all the time reaching out to girls, talking to girls and all of that, yeah. can we start, you know, uh, speaking to the boys? That has started. Because it is the boys that grow up to become the men, yeah. that grow up to become violators. Yeah. And violence is a vicious circle. Yeah. For the young girls who witness violence in their homes, eh, they grow up scared of men. They grow up thinking every man is horrible is terrible which is not true it's a bad i mean no 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 father has the right to make his daughter feel that all men they are good men they are beautiful men mm-hmm. 
Do you understand? And we must recognize that. Yes. Do you understand? They are beautiful men. You know, so it's a vicious circle. The young men, you see men who grow up and when they get married, they have trust issues with their wives. Because of how they grew up. With their mom. So it's a cycle. You know, we need to break that cycle. Because, and it, you know, what happens is if, if, if um, a girl grows up in an abusive home, for yes. instance, she ends up falling for the same kind exactly. of man that her father I'm telling you. Yes. I'm telling you. And so the you see generational cause. Yes. <laughs> yes. The cycle just yes. keeps going. Yes. And the young man will tell the a woman he marries, My papa beat my mama. My exactly. mama not die. If I beat you, you go break, you be egg. That your young man told actually fact, told us me, that in Let me office. give you a good a good story. <laughs> you know, some a, a mother like us told her son slap her when you slap her she will get sense to reset it's her because brain. you're not beating her mm. and I, I turned to look at the woman are you for real mm-hmm. you think the only way your son can get his wife to fall into line mm. is by beating her mm. but she's not his child you can't even beat your child like that <sighs> And this is 2023. You can't even beat your child like that. So I, I know that's why my thinking is now like, so should we start looking to the boys, to the yes. males? We have actually started, when I say we Project Alert and several other organizations, we've started, we, in Project Alert, we have a program called Male Involvement. Mm-hmm. We go into schools. And then we, 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 we do a lot of, we call it school-based advocacy, mm-hmm. targeting both boys and girls. Um, Please hold it out. Good morning. Up you with Azine. Who is calling and where are you calling from? Please, pardon me, I call back. It's okay, sir. If there's no, if there's no other person to call. <laughs> yes. um, right, if you are, if you are, what thing I find out with, not that I'm defending women, I say what is right and how it's supposed to be. Mm. You women sometimes, when you are fighting your cause, you will only say the way, the way you want it to be and you don't want anybody to alter it and uh, you want to to believe that we should, uh, you feel that you people are being marginalized. It's not so. Mm. Okay, your speaker said in a school, before they will call a boy, that she has been attending her children's uh, event, but they will call a boy for a, a word moving or something. They will call up to 20 years. I agree. Thanks. A uh, brain, I agree. That's why men are doctors. Females are doctors. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the same brain. Mm-hmm. But the, there are places that she's dodging. She doesn't want to say the truth. Yeah, and that is what we are men call it done like. Say something as it is. You know, when you, okay, let me speak in this. Say something past you. I agree, say that thing past you, past you. Mm. If your car breaks down on the road as a, a woman, you will stand. You will be stranded looking for help, looking for a man to come and help you out. I will call my husband. I mean, <laughs> you see, it's not a man. He Why don't you do it to yourself? She says we are equal. Okay. You see, that's why when you are, I'm not saying that we will be, we will be manipulating women no, and that we will be bringing them that shame, but no. It's agree okay. for what you are. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Let me put this out very clearly. We are not struggling headship with a man in, on this program or even in life. The man remains head. The woman is the neck. Okay? What we are talking about here is equity. Being fair. Ensuring that you don't hit a woman or take actions that will violate a woman sexually or cause her harm, whether at work, at play, or at home. Those are two different things. We are not contesting whether the man is head or not. That's not what this program is about so thank you for your contribution we do like the fact that you have called us please do feel free to call back again so going on Josephine um, Toby here says she won't call her husband to fix her car I fixed my car oh two weeks ago I had a flat tire I'm I'm in my 50s I'm in my 50s I had I had a flat tire at Okbebi just before the bridge I came down I brought out my spare tire mm. I brought out my, my jack yeah, and everything like and as I was just bending down a young man asked oh mommy let me help you ah, I'm finished me I'll just be waiting for my husband <laughs> a okay, young man I came and said confess. a young man came and said mommy let me help you and I said okay thank you my son but I got out do you understand mm. you know so this um, I think the gentleman you know is a <laughs> is a um, it's clear that a lot of misunderstanding. Okay, on, our on time part. is running on him, so we'll just keep running. Um, 
you know, Lagos State is mm. one of the states that takes them. Um, we have another call. Good morning. Uh, up you with it. Uh, good morning. I'm calling you on the road. Okay, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Sushebo. I just want to add some people. Okay, sir. Sometimes when we talk about gender violence, mm. I think um, we focus mainly on the men. But I must tell you, when you talk about gender violence, don't just look at the violence itself. Also look at what is the cause of this violence. Mm. Spend some of the time on this um, on some programs you do to talk about provocation. Do women provoke men? What are the things they can do not to provoke men? Mm. I think it will go a long way in solving the issue of gender violence. Okay. Then another thing is, if, if, if you have watched a lot of pranks on YouTube, you can just go and watch it. You see when women, young girls, raise hands to stop men. That's gender violence. Mm. Just because the man, the man tries to uh, play a prank on her, they raise up and not one, not why, not why. Just that prank on YouTube. You will see many videos like that. Where women slap men on a birthday life. So I think we need to address this thing completely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'd like to quickly, um, I think I appreciate the comment by this gentleman who yes. just made. And that's the fact to the fact that when we're talking of gender based violence, yes, to a large extent, for a long time, women have been the one on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. But we cannot overlook the fact that men can be and actually are victims of gender-based violence too. Do you right. understand? Mm -hmm. Because, unfortunately, it's because, you know, when there is a problem and you don't try to address the root cause of it, you allow it to fester and you allow the monster to grow. Mm -hmm. For a very long time, some of us have been talking about domestic violence especially. This is just one form of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. We've been talking, oh, women making noise. These women and their noise when their mouth is too rough and too sharp. Talk, I mean, like what he said, mm -hmm. and all of that. Because it was ridiculed, because for a long time it was laughed out. I mean, laughed. People laugh about it, trivialized. Now what we are seeing is that men are also receiving it. Men are being killed in marriages. We have we've read it. Do you understand? Men acid has been poured on men. I've seen a couple of that. It's been poured on women too in the past. Do you understand? Whichever way it is not acceptable, whichever way the, the, the home should not be a war front. That is the point. Okay, very quickly. I also think that there is um, the situation of acculturization here because yes. the men are not speaking out yeah. even when the women are the ones abusing them. Yes. Because yes. you see, the society says it's not a manly thing for how you to say I, that your wife is how beating can you. can I say that my man, my wife Exactly. Me, so know? when you're not talking about it and we don't have reports, we don't have statistics, yeah. we can't champion that cause yeah. effectively. Yeah. But we do recognize the fact that some women are abusers. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. Both at work Yes. and also at home at home yes yeah yeah so um thank you very much for that sir thank you for bringing it up yeah um um let's run i was going to ask you a question about Lagos state mm. Lagos state is one of the states that um takes this very seriously yeah however we saw what happened at the last election that women were abused a woman mm. in particular yeah. Yeah. was beaten up and scared yeah what what has become of that case well um i'm not sure any legal action has been taken against i don't know if the people have been identified and 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 and, and, and charged to court for 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 grievous bodily harm because that was what they did to that woman at the polling station mm -hmm. and she had to go and get stitches and still came back bravely bravely for me she was the heroine of that of that election mm -hmm. with, with with blood on her t-shirt and everything she came back to to vote do you understand so I don't know what has, has has happened to that, you know. But you see that even within elections, you know, even politics, a lot of women are shy away from politics because of violence, mm -hmm. the threat of violence, even starting from their families, even to their communities. You know, what are you going to do there? 
Why why do you think you can go and do something you understand and all of it's that? It's even worse for people like me who would like to do politics but then we're told you can't go to your village. Uh-huh. You're a married woman uh-huh. and then you go to your husband's village. You know, they say you we don't even know where yeah, you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, I mean, a woman, a woman is a pendulum. Do you understand? I'm just swinging yeah, that way and that way. And then you know? every day somebody says you're a good material to be in politics uh-huh. but who is going uh-huh. to uh-huh. accept me? You go to your place now isn't there you are married to a Kwaibo man. Oh, I go to a Kwaibo they say uh-huh. you're, 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 you're an Igbo woman oh, because <laughs> Go to your place, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, um, time as always, it's always um, running out when we're having a uh, good conversation, so we have to wrap this up. Uh, very quickly, Toby, can we have your closing remarks on this um, show today? Um, in closing, I feel like it is important to understand that women or men should not be blamed for somebody's inability to control his or her emotions mm. so when we say um this woman is being abused she got like our last caller said um let's talk about provocation mm-hmm. so if your boss in the office gets you upset do you do the same thing so let's look beyond what the person being abused is doing what are you doing to control yourself? Thank you. I think so. Thank you very much. And then back to you now. Thank you, Zina. And I think <laughs> I appreciate what Toby just the issue of 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 um self control. Mm-hmm. And violence is a power relationship. Mm-hmm. Like Toby, like like Toby said, um in your workplace, a man who says, My wife told me nonsense, so that's why I slapped her. In your workplace, if it was your boss, would you slap her? You wouldn't do that. If you do that, your job is over. Do you understand? So Yes, it's about self-control. It's about seeing each other as friends. It's about seeing each other as friends, as as partners. Provocation. Is it that women don't get provoked by their husbands? Women get provoked by their husbands also. But if my husband provokes me, he does not give me the right to stand up and slap him. You know, so we need to control ourselves. We need to be to manage our emotions and violence does not ever solve a problem thank you thank you very much it's been an absolutely amazing hour with you thank you for all the support and rehabilitation of women and thank you for coming on the show i doff my heart for you this is all we can take today time is not on our side and i'm going to just um, say thank you to everyone that is involved in um, putting on the show every week you know, starting with you, our dear listeners, our guests, our advertisers, callers, the engineers on duty, my producer, the amazing OPU team, 98.3 Mainland FM, the sound of Lagos. You all stay strong, stay blessed, stay lifted. My name is Ezine Kufrek. Her name until next time is OPU.